In this video, we will have a look at two discourse strands connecting citizenship to language that currently dominate the public discussion about language and language education in Europe. The first discourse strand is part of the language policy of the European Union and is prominently displayed on the website of the Council of Europe. It is concerned about educating a plurilingual citizen who should be able to use at least three languages. Policies for language education should therefore promote the learning of several languages for all individuals in the course of their lives, so that Europeans actually become plurilingual and intercultural citizens able to interact with other Europeans in all aspects of their lives. The at least three languages an EU citizen should be able to use would be the person's mother tongue, a language of internal communication and a personal adoptive language, which ideally would be the language from another European Union member state. This plurilingual competence of the population of the European Union would be significant and bring benefits in the following two aspects. First, it allows participation in democratic processes, not only in one's own country and language area, but in concert with other Europeans in other languages and language areas. Secondly, the acquisition of plurilingual competence leads to a greater understanding of the plurilingual repertoires of other citizens and a respect for language rights, not least those of minorities and for national languages less widely spoken and taught. The second strand of discourse does not specifically derive from the European Union and is gaining constantly importance. It explicitly connects citizen rights with language and becomes manifest in, in the language testing regimes for citizenship applications. A Council of Europe and Association of Language Testers in Europe report from 2018 shows that the number of countries that had implemented a precondition for citizenship in the form of a language test has raised from 44% in 2003 to 82% in 2018. This strategy is not only adopted by European Union member states, but also by a growing number of third countries. The main arguments, quite similar to the first discourse strand revisited here, revolve around social cohesion and democratic participation, which would be guaranteed by the mastering of the respective state language. The first line of argument, outlining the language education of the plurilingual citizen, clearly addresses an educated elite. Languages available for selection in the classroom are languages with a standardized written form and a prestigious literary tradition. Fluency in these languages would go hand in hand with knowledge about the countries, the language is spoken in, their history, culture and society. The linguistic competencies a person achieves in his or her mother tongue would be mirrored in the second and third language. Utz Maas and Ulrich Melem aptly describe this form of multilingualism as virtuoso multilingualism. Virtuoso multilingualism, including the aforementioned extra-linguistic knowledge about a language and its speakers, is connected with a kind of mobility that is analyzed as culturally enriching and self-actualizing travel, undertaken by the cosmopolitan elites of tradition traditional upper middle class. In contrast, the second line of argument is directed at those who occupy precarious positions in the nation state as asylum seekers and other migrants. Their migration is not interpreted positively as self-actualizing travel and linguistically they do not enjoy the same freedom of choice as most urban elites.
while the citizen of the respective country would be free in selecting his personal adoptive language for immigrants, this personal adoptive language would be the national language of his or her country of immigration. The mastery of the national language prevents the evolvement of parallel communities and is prerequisite for social cohesion and integration.